there's not too much to analyze about cells at work, but I do want to call out two things. Episode 9 shocked me somewhat, and I wonder if that's partly a matter of cultural differences. It's definitely strange to see tween children going through hardcore military training, especially in the modern world where child soldiers actually show up in actual news headlines. Now, these scenes do make sense according to the logic of the Cells at Work world, and I do have to wonder if a culture like Jap uh, Japan's that's never been attacked by an army that employs child soldiers is more willing to portray them in a light comedy series. It is also worth noting that Japanese education in the early 20th century was relatively militaristic, so historically it's not unusual for Japanese children to think of themselves as soldiers at least. Now, shows often live and die on the quality of their endings, and I admit I was waiting for a satisfying ending from Cells at Work, and fortunately, we got one. Now, I'm not going to suggest this is Grave of the Fireflies territory, but for a show that spent much of its running time showing Red Blood Cell freaking out and White Blood Cell going all Sosuke Sagara on various absurdly designed infections, it's notable that the finale mostly leaves comedy behind. It's also lovely that the finale is about work, given that that's a word in the show's title. And it's also about Red Blood Cell herself. We've seen that she's not a particularly good delivery person, but in the finale, we see her core strength. She works. She does the job, come what may. A highly admirable trait. Now, working hard for work's sake is also a stereotypically Japanese trait. I really can't imagine an American show ending with a celebration of being a hard worker purely. It's one of the things I actually enjoy so much about anime. I get to experience another culture's values, even when the culture represented is one of cells in hot pants running around a giant city that symbolizes a human body. If nothing else, Cells at Work shows that any premise, no matter how strange, can actually provide us with things to think about.